special thanks to our platinum sponsor, Alpine Air. Turn to the expert. walks and the roadways around my house were bone dry and when I left for work not long thereafter it was kind of wet. So we're gonna have today this is this pattern is not changing at all folks just gray and cloudy a couple of little sun breaks here and there temperatures slightly above normal and we will show you a couple of slides from the Climate Prediction Center regarding next week Christmas week. That's coming up, and the news, and sports. We had an incredible wrestling match last night between Moses Lake and Eastmont on the east side of the river. Went right down to the last match. Highlights from some pretty exciting grappling going on, and highlights of uh, not the prettiest of Wenatchee wild hockey games last night in the Rose City. In the back half of the program, it is Thursday. Pause for pets. Elvira, Elvira needs a home. We'll visit with uh, Elvira from our friends uh, at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And this afternoon, from 2 o'clock to 6 o'clock, the Wenatchee Convention Center, all three of the local public utility districts, the Chelan PUD, the Douglas PUD, and the Grant PUD, is hosting a Clean Energy Expo. We're so addicted around here to cheap electricity, courtesy of the dams, but there are other things out there. Clean energy. And you're going to be hearing from Brett Bickford, who is the Generation and Transmission Director. That's an important job at the Chelan PUD, and our friend Rachel Hansen, who's in the uh, communications department. She's the strategist. Rachel and Brett will join me in the back half of the program. M make time to check this out this afternoon at the Wenatchee Convention Center. Totally free, very educational. Check it out. Uh, I think we've got all that out of the way. It's tour time. Uh, the uh, cross camera is not available to us this morning, so we have a the roof of the Cascadian pointing to the north. Looks like it's pixelating just a little bit. That camera is zoomed about as far out as it could be. And you can see the wet roadways on this early Thursday morning. It's not really early. It's a little after 7 if you're watching the live edition. Sunrise this morning, 741. Sunset tonight, 410. Eight hours and 29 minutes of daylight. One more day of that 410 sunrise. And then it'll be a little bit later uh, coming up on Saturday. That's the Omi Garden camera. Looking out pretty good, so it's, you can see it's just kind of, kind of misty, kind of, kind of looks like Hoquiam, doesn't it? Good morning to the Omi Garden camera. Let's visit Lake Chelan because we love Lake Chelan, to the tip top of McNeil Canyon. In fact, on the tip top of the tip top, that tower that's uh, that you see there. You don't see the tower, but the camera on top of that tower is way up there. That's how we can see over the edge and into the big bowl that is Lake Chelan on this Thursday morning. And speaking of Lake Chelan, the Lower Butte camera looks something like this. People on their way on the highway heading on into Chelan. If we turn that thing uh, to the right, you can see Chelan proper. It's pretty cloudy and pretty foggy up there. Let's see, in Chelan right now, let me see, I got your temperature up here. You were at 32 degrees, we're at 34, the warm spot right now, Ellensburg at 37. The Climate Prediction Center sent this our way yesterday, if you're dreaming of a white Christmas, just like the ones you used to know, and that's as far as I can go, where we have to pay the estate of Irving Berlin, it's not going to happen. This came out yesterday. This is pretty much for next week, your 6 to 10 day temperature outlook. We have a 60 to 70 percent chance of seeing our temperatures above normal. And as far as precipitation, a, and the same time period, I might add, a 30% chance of having below normal precipitation. So you add up uh, warm temperatures and dry conditions, and that means we're not going to have a white Christmas. I think we can pretty much guarantee that. Now, that's not such a bad thing. People do like the white Christmas, but you don't necessarily need to have Mother Nature uh, cooperate to, st to still get in the Christmas spirit. That is my opinion, and of course, my opinion carries merit. From the National Weather Service, <clears throat> here we go. Could see a sunbreak today. I uh, hope so. 
Snow level is about 4,000 feet, so a little bit of light snow in the passes. That's about it. Light rain down here. We'll top off at 38. That's above normal. Our normal high is 34. Patchy fog and dense freezing fog and clouds and blech. 31 for the overnight low tonight. Friday, clouds and fog and freezing fog and a high of 39. Clouds and fog and freezing fog. Friday night, overnight low around 30. Now Saturday, and clouds and fog and freezing fog and a and a high of 38. Clouds and fog and freezing fog on Saturday night and overnight low of 29. And on a Sunday, clouds and fog and fog and clouds and mist and clouds and fog. And I think I'm writing a children's tune. We warm up into the 40s on Wednesday. That's your forecast. It's <laughs> six minutes after the hour. We're going to take a break. Maybe it should be about a 45 minute break and I'll go back to bed, but we can't do that. We got the news. It's next. You're watching the Thursday edition of Wake Up in Anche Valley on the NCW Life channel. At DA Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Come enjoy the very best of the Chelan Valley. Combine award-winning wines, outstanding food, and music to create a memorable holiday experience. Chelan Cellars and Sorrento's Restaurante, your Tuscan paradise. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. Cloudy, misty, foggy, yeah, it's 34 degrees, and that's pretty much what we're going to be dealing with for the foreseeable future. Temperatures above normal for both the afternoon highs and the overnight lows. It's eight minutes after the hour. We'll begin with this. A new mayor coming to the city of Wenatchee. That's not the new mayor, I might add. It also means a new council member is needed at Wenatchee City Hall. As you know by now, Mike Poyer will be sworn in as mayor at the end of this month, he represents Council District 2, so that means that seat will be vacated and they'll need a new city council representative. You have to be a registered voter, you have to live in District 2, and you have to be a citizen of Wenatchee, a resident of Wenatchee for at least one year. If you apply, if you qualify in those three criteria, you can apply to, for city council. Applications are available through the city's website or at the Wenatchee City Clerk's Office. January 12th, by the way, is the deadline to apply. The new council member will be sworn in on February 8th. Same scenario up north in Chelan. A sitting council member is going to be mayor, so her seat is now going to be vacated. Erin McCardle will take over the mayorship at the end of the year. Her position to council seat needs to be filled. So there's another open seat for another qualified uh, applicant that will be appointed come January. Uh, you must be a full-time resident within the Chelan city limits. You got to be at least 18 years old and yeah, you got to be a registered voter. Candidates will be interviewed at the January 9th Chelan city council meeting. Applicants can apply through the city's website or you can contact the city clerk of Chelan. The application period closes at the end of business on January 2nd. Two Wenatchee Valley men face possible charges in what police characterize as a major seizure of fentanyl and other illicit drugs. The Columbia River Drug Task Force says it will seek charges against Stephen Edward Graham of Wenatchee and William Cody Swager Larson of East Wenatchee, alleging unlawful delivery of multiple drugs as well as possession with intent. The case stems from a November 29th arrest in which Graham allegedly made multiple drug sales out of a Wenatchee hotel room. 
Police say a search of the room and a vehicle turned up 9,400 fentanyl pills, more than 500 Xanax pills, 219 grams of methamphetamine, five firearms, including three that have been reported stolen, and more than $19,000 in cash. Both men have prior drug arrests and convictions. Prosecutors filed formal charges yesterday. A Wenatchee woman is accused of stealing at least $18,000 from her employer over a period of years. 64-year-old Laura Lou Phillips was charged by summons with 10 felony counts in Chelan County Superior Court, including first-degree theft, identity theft, and eight counts of forgery. Wenatchee police say the apparent embezzlement from the asbestos remediation company where she worked as an accountant <coughs> stretches back to at least 2020, possibly even farther back than that. She allegedly wrote unapproved checks to herself or to cash out of the company's accounts. Phillips made her first court appearance, by the way, on Wednesday. She remains free on her own recognizance. Arraignment is scheduled for next week. The Wenatchee School Board is preparing next steps for a levy or a bond or perhaps both. Superintendent Corey Callahar gave a presentation at Tuesday night's board meeting on levy and bond planning. That includes statistical data on past elections. That's what you see there. In the last eight bond campaigns, voters have passed only two. The most recent successful bond that was passed in 2014. Before that, they hadn't passed a bond since 2002. On the other hand, voters have passed every levy election for the past 30 years. Kalahar says that the district wants to combine the next levy and bond campaign and put them on the same ballot. And for the last 30 years or so, the Gaspar family has decked out their beautiful home on Northwestern Avenue on the west side of Wenatchee with their unbelievable Christmas light display. Well, we caught up with Dan Gaspar to hear about the history behind the family lights. This year, dedicated to their son, Adam. Adam passed away back in August. Uh, the Gaspar family's been decorating um, different homes over the years, but we started in 1962. We've done it here at this house since we've lived here for over 30 years. So it's a real passion of ours to, to decorate for Christmas. We've, we've won a lot of awards over the years. There's been a lot of competitions from when it started, but we don't do it for the competition. We do it for the spirit of the holiday season. We initially start putting Christmas lights up right around uh, the middle of October. Uh, we start then, so it takes a number of weeks to put up the display. In our Christmas display, the manger is the central theme, the central aspect of our display, and probably my most favorite display, especially because my mother, God rest her soul, she passed away in 1999, but she helped in painting all those figures. This year, our display um, has a lot of the pieces in it that uh, have been there for years, but this year we have a special sign in honor of our son. Um, Adam Gaspar, who passed away this August. Um, Adam loved the Christmas display and was very instrumental in helping with it during the years, putting it up and helping replace lights and that sort of thing. So this year our display is dedicated to Adam, our son, and we have a sign up especially for him. And uh, so it is a pretty special holiday season. Uh, sad in a lot of ways, of course, because we miss Adam dearly, but uh, it's a special uh, memorial for him in our display this year. We've done the display for many, many years, and I hope to continue doing it for a number of years as long as I can still do it. So uh, we plan on doing it and continuing to do it. You know, our Christmas display is really a, a, a function of our, our feelings about Christmas and what it means to us as a family, as a Gaspar family. And really, to me and to us, Christmas is about giving. And our display is about giving back to the community of Wenatchee some joy during the holiday season to brighten up your life a little bit, to have somebody smile or bring by their grandmother or maybe bring by the young children to see the display or maybe even walk through the display. So it's the joy of sharing with people the joy of Christmas through our light display. Santa, in his busy schedule, is able to come by and visit our display a little bit before Christmas. So this year on Saturday, December 23rd, Santa will be here 
visiting us in our display from 5.30 to 8 o'clock. We will have hot cocoa for folks that to enjoy. We'll have candy canes, and we also have an opportunity for families or anybody to get pictures with Santa Claus. So it's been become pretty popular, and we invite anybody to come by and visit us on the 23rd, that Saturday night, to visit with Santa and enjoy the Christmas lights and some companionship with other people during the holidays. The video is good, but it doesn't do it justice. You gotta see it with your naked eye. That's the news. At quarter after the hour, we endeavor to put together a newscast for you every night. We think it's important that you know what's going on around here. The news with Grant uh, and Eric will come your way at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock tonight. 5, 6, and 10 on television. That doesn't fit into your busy schedule. We're all busy, especially this time of the year. It'll be up and running on our website, ncwlife.com, our Facebook page, and our YouTube page, and on our app. If you're into that, and if there's a news tip, get a hold of us. Send us an email, news at ncwlife.com. Sports is next. You're watching a Thursday edition of Wake Up in Angie Valley on the NCW Life channel. Most of us are in touch with the internet in one way or another all day long. A fast, secure connection matters. It keeps us entertained, informed, and in touch. Localtel cares about your connection. We know strong, reliable internet with your choice of speed makes life better. If you need fast, reliable internet, or maybe an upgrade, or you just have questions, connect with us by visiting localtel.com or call 509-888-8888 today. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way. We got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Eighteen minutes after the air, just one college basketball game of note. Last night, Eastern Washington uh, took on Portland Bible. Is that correct? 103 to 34? Okay. That's what it says. Cedric Coward led five players in double figures. He had 25 points. Dane Eric Strip had 17 for the Eagles. Seattle Kraken, after stopping an eight-game losing streak on Tuesday, are going to try to make it a winning streak. Uh, fresh off a 4-0 victory over Florida earlier in the week, the Kraken will host the Blackhawks tonight at Climate Pledge Arena, 7 o'clock. It'll be on Route Sports Northwest. In a game marred by 20 penalties, including two 10-minute misconducts and two 5-minute fighting infractions, they got some hockey in. Wenatchee lost to Portland last night, 7-2. The Winterhawks taking advantage of a 10-minute misconduct penalty and two power play goals that started the second period, put Portland on top 3-0. Wenatchee came back. It wasn't enough. Here are your highlights. Circles Wood. Wood down low. Behind the net to the left wing. Off the corner to the circle. One timer scores. Graham Sward takes it and shoots one over the glove of Justin Marich and a power play goal for the Wenatchee Wild. Hawks cut the right wall. They go to the center ice here for Canyoni. Canyoni left. Clawson shoots. He scores. There it is. Career goal number 100 for Gabe Clawson, the 27th winner hawk all time to get a century mark in goals. It's on.
the power play. Blocker side on G. He puts it post and in. Beer garden area. Left wing coming through, looking for a tip. What a deflection. Sherbina spun his body around 180 degrees, redirected a hard pass to the top of the crease, and he finds the back of the net. That is an impressive tip to make it 4 2. Low to high, missed one timer. Here comes a breakaway. Clausen picked it up, gave Clausen in. Clausen shoots, denied. Big Brendan save. G. Big save, Brendan G. And now it's back to the high slot, and Portland will drive it to neutral. Hawks pick it up, two on one. Left wing in, Portland around the defender, center, he scores! Kyle McDonough finds Josh Sakreski. Portland gets his fifth of the night, extends the lead back to three. Portland has it, they'll skate with it for a moment. Now they send it to open ice, and this one will do it. Walking it into the net, Jack O'Brien on the feed from Josh Sakreski, a 6-2 lead for Portland. My pass comes up there from Dart. Right side, Canyoni, goal line shot. Save made, rebound, Darby scores! Hudson Darby, third of the year, on the power play, beats the clock. 1.1 to go, and the Winter Hawks add another. Puck down, that'll do it. Seven, two winners. Your Portland Winter Hawks offense has been grooving. While they're uh, back home at the Town Toyota Center tomorrow night, this is a big at Prince George is the team they're chasing. Prince George is in first place in our division. We're in second place, seven o'clock, Town Toyota Center. It is ugly sweater night tomorrow night. Great wrestling match last night right here on the NCW Life Channel. Moses Lake and Eastmont back and forth and forth and back. The match went down to the final bout to determine the winner. As you see, Mavericks would pull out the 39-36 victory with pins in the final two weights. Eric had the call. Seven of the first nine matches, by the way, were pins. 20 seconds left in the round. That's a long time for Lamb to hold on here, and he will not. He's got it in well now. Now it's about those arching, using your head, using your neck. No, it's going to be a pin. One minute, three seconds into the second round for Keiston Hughes, and we're tied at 6-6. He's got it on the near side, going to flip him over backside. And again, looking for points at least, if not the pin. Nygaard flailing about, but no, it's going to be a pin. A minute and 26 seconds into round number one. Come in behind him, no points yet. And there is a takedown for Dixon for Eastmont. Now looking for the cradle, he got it, and he's gonna get a pin. Holy cow, look at this. For Dex Dixon, a pin. 44 seconds into round number one. Hall a little bit high here, but also was able to get the cradle far side draw him to him and got the pin how about that look out Kidrowski looking for the takedown and looking for more with 27 seconds left has him turned looking for the pin Rodriguez doing all he can to stay off of his back he will not though and the match comes to an end here in round number two 140 into it if you hold it for a matter of a few seconds it's worth two if you hold it for a matter of, th of more than that, it's worth three. Or if you put both shoulders to the mats, it's a pin just like that. Yelling out onto the mats in the din here at Eastmont High School. A sit out for Hernandez. He'll crowd. He'll lift. He will. No. Will he get the two points reversal? No. They're still saying that. Robles has the advantage, and now will they say a two-point reversal? Yes, they will. Robles, Hernandez tied at nine with 15 seconds to go. One-point escape, so it's going to come down to a takedown with 10 seconds left. Hernandez with the shot. 10-9 the score. Seven seconds left. Robles trying to hang on for dear life with four, with three, with two. They're off the mat with a second to go. <laughs> <laughs> and the shots and that'll do it Alexander Robles with a 10-9 win 
over Cruz Hernandez. Got the arm. Trying to pull him towards him, posting up. And now looking for the pin here. And boy, he's looking pretty good to get that pin right now. He does. Major decision would give Moses Lake the match. And again, he's looking for the pin, looking for just clear sailing for the Mavericks. And he'll get it. And Moses Lake will come back and win the match. It was a very exciting uh, match. Other wrestling scores from last night. Cashmere, really good, a big winner, a double duel at Cascade last night. Bulldogs beating the Kodiaks and Quincy. The other two matches saw Quincy beating Chelan and Cascade beating the Goats. Prep basketball, not a lot happening. Connell beat Cascade in boys basketball. Moses Lake Christian stopped Soap Lake in a girls games. A couple of lopsided games. Connell battered Cascade and Soap Lake beat Moses Lake Christian. Busy schedule tonight, though. Starts at 5.30, girls basketball. East Monson Davis, Riverside Christian hosts Cascade Christian. Afraid is at Quincy. Yeah, let's see, Manson will host Liberty Bell at 6 in girls basketball. Okanagan's at Tenasca. Soap Lake will host Wilson Creek. The Waterville Mansfield girls get center stage tonight at 7.30. They host Pateras. Boys schedule, Billy Goat and Shockers. They'll start off the night in boys basketball at 6. East Monson at Davis at 7. Cascade Christian is at Riverside Christian. Afraid of battles Quincy. 7.30, you got Liberty Bell at Manson. Tenasca hosting Okanagan. Wilson Creek travels to Soap Lake, and girls bowling continues today. A couple of matches. Eastmont visits Moses Lake at 3 o'clock. Wenatchee is on the road at Sela. And those are just some of the games that people are playing. On this 14th day of December for the obscure holiday, we celebrate Monkey Day. Happy Monkey Day today. It's National Monkey Day. Um, we're raising awareness about monkeys, and wouldn't you know it, I have fun facts about monkeys. How many species of monkeys are there? A little over 260 known species of monkeys. There might be a species of monkey or two that are hiding that we haven't found yet. Monkeys are not apes, by the way. Most monkeys, but not all monkeys, most monkeys have tails. A group of monkeys that hang around together is known as a tribe or a mission. Some monkeys live exclusively on the ground, some monkeys live exclusively in trees, and some do a little bit of both. Old world monkeys live in Africa and Asia. New world monkeys live in Central and South America. And the only wild monkeys in Europe are barely in Europe. They're in Gibraltar. And I'm told they're quite friendly. Happy National Monkey Day today. 28 minutes after the hour today in history. On December 14th, 1650, we're going back a ways. 373 years, and in, back in those days in England, if you gave birth to a stillborn, illegitimate child, you were hanged. No kidding. Anne Green is hanged in England. Her crime was giving birth to a stillborn, illegitimate child, which apparently carried the death penalty. They hung her. They put her in a coffin. They sent her off to Oxford University to be dissected the next day. They showed up. They opened the coffin to dissect Anne Green, and she was alive. She was still breathing. She had a pulse. They brought her back. She lived. She fully recovered. It was given a full pardon, but eventually Mary had three kids, and they let her keep the coffin. Kind of a consolation. Sorry about the hanging. Make it up for you. The coffin that we put you in, gratis. That happened on the state 373 years ago today. State flags, here we go again. Guess the state? That flag sends a message, Alabama. Alabama joined the Union 204 years ago as the 22nd state. Alabama, Alabama has 41 official state emblems or symbols. 41, uh, you know, dozen or so <coughs> is plenty for most people. 41's a bit, bit much. Scottsboro, Alabama is a place you want to go if you want to Find out what happened to your luggage. It's home to this huge, and I mean huge, unclaimed baggage store. It's called the Unclaimed Baggage Center, and it's where all the baggage goes when the airlines have done everything they possibly could to get a hold of the rightful owner 
All avenues have been exhausted. They ship them off to this ginormous store who sells them. And it's huge. And you see, people come from hundreds of miles away to shop at the Unclaimed Baggage Center, which is an exclusive store in Scottsboro, Alabama. The Constitution requires, we're not quite there, there yet, Uriah, the Constitution requires that um, the states have to redistrict themselves. Of course, every 10 years, there's a census, and then they redistrict the states. Alabama simply ignored that. From 1901 to 1972, Alabama did not redistrict at all, period. Alabama's Constitution has 850 amendments and it's over 87,000 words long. In Alabama, they do things very differently. Instead of just passing a law, the House of Representatives, the Senate, and then it's signed into law by the governor, they just amend the Constitution. They are constantly amending the Constitution. Uh, to be elected to the Alabama State Supreme Court, it is a partisan election. All nine are Republicans. A Democrat has not been elected to the Alabama State Supreme Court in 16 years, and only seven of Alabama's 67 counties have limited home rule. So 60 of the 67 counties in Alabama, all of their local ordinances and laws have to be passed by the Alabama state legislature. No power at all invested to the local government. But we love Alabama anyway, 202 years old today. You briefly saw that, now you're gonna see it again, uh, December 14th, 1911. That would make it 112 years ago today. Uh, it's early summer, of course, in the South Pole, and there they are. Raoul Udmundsen's team, which comprised of himself, Olav Baha, Helmut Hansen, Svel Hassel, and Oscar Wisting, becomes the first people to make it to the South Pole. And there they are at the South Pole, December 14, 1911. I'm told it was really cold. And finally, 51 years ago today, Apollo 17, they're done. Harrison Schmidt gets into the little capsule to take them back up for their trip back to the planet, followed by Eugene Cernan. Eugene Cernan gets on the capsule, closes it up, and they're gone. That, making, that makes Eugene Cernan on this date in 1972 the last man to walk on the moon. I'm told we're going back. Why, I don't know. Birthdays. I love the Andy Griffith Show. Aunt B, Frances Bavier, born in the state in 1902. What a lot of people don't know about Frances Bavier, even though she played the lovable uh, Aunt B, uh, she, uh, you had to walk on eggshells around the set of the Andy Griffith Show. She was easily offended. <coughs> she, she, just, she was very difficult to work with, and she admitted it. Just about four months before she passed away, she called Andy Griffith and said, I'm sorry, I know during the run of the Andy Griffith Show, at Mayberry RFD that I was difficult and hard to be around, and I apologize for that. When Frances Bavier died in 1989 in her will, she left $100,000 to the local police department in her hometown, and they took the $100,000. It's in a trust account, and the interest from that trust account pays for the Christmas bonuses for the Siler City, North Carolina Police Department. Frances Bavier, born in the state, hundred and well, a long time ago. Spike Jones, born in the state in 1911. De Fierro's Face, Cocktails for Two, the Hawaiian War Chant. Just listen to the music. It'll cheer you up. Spike Jones, uh, born in the state in 1911. And Charlie Rich, the Silver Fox, would have been 91 years old today. If you ever get a chance to get the album, The Fabulous Charlie Rich, came out in the early 70s. It's the best blues meets country album ever. Get a copy. Get two in case one breaks. The great Charlie Rich, born in the state, 1931. Thank you, Alpine Air, for heat and air. Call Alpine Air. They are our platinum sponsor. Right here for the NCW Life Channel. We have uh, other sponsors as well that have divvied up, and we love them. Alpine Air, special love to you guys. Still to come, Brett Bickford and Rachel Hansen from the Chelan County PUD. The Clean Energy Expo is this afternoon, put on by all three of the local PUDs, you want to check it out. Brett and Rachel will give you all of that info, plus Mike McNaughty's opinion. But it's Thursday, it's Pause for Pets. Alvira the dog needs a home. Hi, I'm Corley with Wenatchee Valley Humane Society, Animal Care Coordinator. And this beautiful shepherd mix, <laughs> who loves treats, is Alvira. 
She is a sweetheart. She loves her toys and she will play fetch with you all day if you let her. She's, um, she's got a lot of energy still. She's only two, we think. And, um, and she's beautiful. She's a great size. She's, you know, that kind of medium, mid-size. <laughs> so she's a shepherd mix. We're not sure what she's mixed with, <laughs> but she's got this beautiful black coat and her tail's kind of curly. So I don't know what she could be, but she's got gorgeous brown eyes. I don't know, maybe, maybe part husky. It's hard to say, <laughs> but she's part sweetheart. That we know. <laughs> I think that she'd do really well with a family, with a young family. She's just a really sweet dog. <laughs> She's got just a really great personality and she loves her belly rubs <laughs> and she loves walks and um, she just, you know, wants to do whatever you are doing. Yes, and she loves ear scratches. Um, we, as usual, since she was a stray, we don't know about cats. Um, we do know that she can be a little selective with other dogs if you have one. Um, she has uh, she has big feelings about dogs, <laughs> um, so it might be best if she's your only. But you know, we always uh, encourage people to come down with their dogs if uh, if they're interested in meeting her to see how they do together. She's just she's just a beautiful soul of a dog, and we really want to see her get a home. <laughs> Uh, she's really smart. She knows some tricks. She knows she she sits faster than a lot of other dogs I've seen do it, and she knows she knows her down, and she knows come and even shake. She's very smart. That's the shepherd in her. So if you'd like to come and meet Elvira, we are open 11 till 6, Thursday through Tuesday, and we'd love to introduce you. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at WenatchieHumane.org. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want a bet, kid? In today's environment, risk management assessment is a crucial process for your business. Risk assessment will identify, evaluate, and mitigate hazards. Don't let risk impact your business income, reputation, operations, and your overall success. We can give you peace of mind by transferring your business risks to the insurance providers. Call Stacy at August Edge Insurance today to schedule a risk management assessment for your business. Hey, this is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, I've heard people say, I don't care what other people think. Well, I've said it myself. I'll bet you've said it too, but let's be honest. I don't think there's any of us out there that really don't care about what other people think about us. Well, well maybe psychopaths don't care, but uh, well, whatever, whatever. I, I had to admit that I do care what other people think of me. However, 
What I've also come to realize is that even though I care what people think, I often don't care enough to do anything about it. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs>Pizza, we believe in real food. Freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest Craft Beers and 30 Chelan Valley Wines and Ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. Welcome back to the program. When people think of uh, a local PUDs, Grant, Douglas, and Chelan PUD, I, I, I think of three things. Cheap electricity, courtesy of our hydroelectric dams, I think fiber, and I think the incredible parks uh, departments that all three of these fine PUDs have. But that's not what it's all about when we're talking about what you can do today at the Wenatchee Convention Center because the Douglas PUD, the Chelan PUD, and the Grant County PUD have all teamed up to do the, what's the official name of it, Rachel? Give me the official name of this thing this afternoon. It's the Clean Energy Expo. Yeah, okay. bring your curiosity. Why can't I remember that? <laughs> uh, Rachel Hansen is the uh, communications gal at the Chelan PUD and a good friend of ours. Brett Bickford, and this is an you're, you're the Generation and Transmission Director. Yes. That's an important job. Yeah, so I'm responsible for the operations of our hydroelectric projects, which are Chelan, Rocky Reach, and Rock Island, as well as all the transmission that takes that power from the dams and then distribu distributes it to all of our substations. So what's your, what, what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you have like a bunch of monitors in front of a big impressive desk? and? Or do you out and about in the field? I mean, how does that work on your day-to-day -day work? Yeah, day-to-day -day work is uh, planning. So we have lots and lots of work that we have to do to maintain our hydro projects. And so that's um, near-term planning, a lot of maintenance, as well as capital construction work. And so we're doing some really neat things at our hydro projects as well as, you know, we've done a lot with uh, fish-friendly turbines. And now we're uh, even moving farther into that we're looking at um, how we can reduce the amount of oil that we have and we're looking at um, we're right now constructing oil-free turbines. And so at Rocky Reach, we're going to replace that oil with water. And at Rock Island Powerhouse, too, we're going to replace that oil with air. So we're the first ones on the Columbia River to give that a try. The Rock Island Dam is, what, 90 years old, close to it? How, how old is the Rock Island Dam? Yeah, so that was originally constructed in the 30s. 30s, so. And there's two powerhouses. And the first powerhouse was built in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And then the second powerhouse was built in the mid-70s. This sounds like a silly question, but do hydroelectric dams, even those as well engineered and constructed as the two dams that constitute the Valley Rock Island on one side and Rocky Reach to the do they have a finite lifespan? Or can they literally, if they're maintained correctly, not just the, 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 the turbines, I think, but the dams themselves, do, the, do dams last essentially forever if they're done right? Well, that's what we're really trying to work towards is making sure that everything that we do today helps increase the life of that concrete structure. But the mechanical equipment, it definitely um, needs to get changed out, and that's one project that we're working on at Powerhouse 2 is replacing all those turbines and generators because they're now about 45 years old. And so we're replacing those there. But the concrete, um, as we see it um, age over time, we're doing all we can to help maintain that, to hopefully for perpetuity. And replacing those massive pieces of equipment, you're not talking four guys in hard hats and a dolly. This is quite an operation here, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Yeah. 
So hydroelectric electricity is the backbone of the, of the PUDs, uh, and the dams are the backbone of the backbone. But today at the Wenatchee Convention Center, Rachel, you're, you're going to want people to start thinking outside of that box, because that's all we think about. Hey, we got the dams, we got super cheap electricity, and they can sell the excess power off to other municipalities, and everybody's happy. But that's, that's kind of uh, pie in the sky thinking, isn't it? Yeah, so I mean, we've got this great foundation of hydropower with our dams, um, but looking 50 years down the road, I mean, there are some scenarios where we may want to diversify some of those energy sources. So if you look at um, the Clean Energy Transformation Act, passed in 2019. It says that Washington State needs to transition its electric supply to all non-greenhouse non emitting, non-greenhouse gas emitting sources mm -hmm. within the next 10 years. So that means between a quarter and a third of our electrical supply uh, needs to be all renewable within the next 10 years. And we're the right place to start thinking about that because if you, you we've got the Douglas, Grant, and Chelan public utility districts were called the Mid-Columbia, and we're one of the great power hubs of the Pacific Northwest. That's where everybody comes to, uh, to buy their energy. So we're in a great location with all this transmission structure to deliver energy. Um, we're a highly desirable place to have some of these renewable energy resources, and it's the right time because we need to create some more supply as a state to support the regional en energy grid. So two to six today, uh, we're gonna bring in some of the world's leading energy technology companies to come talk to our customers and show them what's up and coming and some of these opportunities. What is up and coming? Uh, what should we be keeping an eye on in the future uh, as far as, uh, as, as weaning ourselves, so to speak, off hyd hydroelectricity and being prepared for other types of power? Yeah, so we haven't predetermined anything, but that's one reason why we're having this expo and we're bringing all these different technologies. And we've tried to bring the ones that are the leading edge, the cutting edge from around, around the country and, and the world. And so we think some of the ones, are the ones that I'm most intrigued with are, is one called gravity storage. Yeah, we were talking about this before we rolled the cameras. I had no idea what that is, but when you explain it to me, it makes perfect sense. Explain it to our viewers. Yeah, and so gravity storage, um, some people might have heard of pump storage, and where that's where we have an upper and lower water reservoir, and the water gets pumped up uh, when it's either low price or there's lots of availability, and then that water is stored until it's needed. Well, with this concept of gravity storage, you don't need the water. You can basically move large weights or masses up the hill, uh, when you have abundant power and then when it's needed you can run it back down to generate electricity. Why I think that's so neat is because you don't have to have all the mechanical equipment of, of a turbine and the pen stocks and other things and so I think it's it's really um, a neat environmental way to do that. The more moving parts there are more points of failure. It, the yep, and more cost increase. to build and maintain. Right. There's also uh, obviously solar power has been uh, quite popular lately. There's the proposal of a fairly sizable solar power farm up in the Badger Mountain area. We have bountiful sunshine. Uh, other types of, of power that people might not be too familiar with. Do you want to throw out some, a couple, couple more examples? Sure. Yeah, and one of, the, one of the things that we're also trying to learn about is there's the energy generation, as you mentioned, solar and wind. But we also, as I mentioned, gravity storage, we need to figure out how we can store it so when there's not a lot of wind or not water or solar, that uh, when we do have those, that we can have 24-7 you know, as much as we need. And so, yeah, we'll be talking about uh, hydrogen generation. Douglas County PUD is doing that. And so that's as a generation source, but you can also store it for, for those off times. One of the most intriguing um, technologies, I think, that we're gonna be talking about is, is a fusion. And so that's opposite of fission, but it's another way to create electricity. And there's some companies here in the Northwest that are kind of peer, uh, pioneering how to do that with um, the minimal amount, again, I kind of mentioned with gravity, uh, we don't necessarily have to have all the infrastructure and pen stocks in this fusion process. It's direct production of electricity. So you might see the you know conventional nuclear power plants, how they have a huge cooling tower, a huge structure, and a large reactor. Well, this fusion technology, um, you don't need the large reactor system, and you don't need all that cooling water. And also they're doing it with um, helium atoms, 
which don't produce those radioactive isotopes that you get from, from um, uranium and things like that. So I think people will be really interested and want to key in on that technology. And, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, from what my, my rudimentary knowledge of nuclear power is, nuclear power doesn't go very far at, at high transmission rates, right? I mean, you have to be fairly, the uh, nuclear power plant has to be fairly close to where the electricity is needed, correct? As opposed to hydroelectric, which can travel over great distances? No, it can be the same. It can be the, the same? The electricity that comes out the same can be transmitted. Okay. Yep. Does uh, do, do the PUDs, and Rachel, I'll ask you this question, do they, you feel like you have an obligation to do this? Uh, if you don't understand what I'm saying, yeah. like, you know, hey, we got, the, we got the dams, we're sitting fat and pretty, so what, what do we care? But I mean, you're, you guys are the experts, you should be well, doing this. Yeah, why well, I think it matters is because as we have to make this transformation um, away from coal and away from natural gas, is if we can't supply that, I mean, the price is gonna go up for everybody. And so the more supply that we can have, we can keep that price down. There is a finite amount of coal. There's a finite amount of natural gas. But some of these others are pretty much self-perpetuating. I mean, they're just going to keep going, right? Yeah. So we have an opportunity here. We have an opportunity similar to what we had back in the 50s when the, you know, when the people were faced with the decision whether to buy or um, or build the dams. Um, you know, they were thinking 50 years down the road. They were thinking. They had a long-range plan, and it was a pretty bold decision to do that. Well, here we are. Um, there are some futures where we might need some more energy, and so we're thinking about how to secure some of this opportunity for public power, so that we can continue that legacy of looking out for our customers' best interests while also supplying the regional energy grid. There's ways to do both, and we are the right. We're the right place. It's the right time to have those conversations. And we want our customers to be a part of it. So one of the biggest things that you'll find today at the event, we're, we want everybody to give us their opinion about what they learned that day. So we're going to have a survey. We want to know what people's priorities are in terms of what's most important to them when it comes to energy source. As a consumer, what, what's their biggest priority? Do they want low rates? Do they want um, you know, a big abundance of energy, like what are they looking for in an energy technology? We also want some guidance as their utility, their public utility. What do they want us to look at in terms of how to vet some of these technologies going forward? So that survey, um, if you can't make it today at the event, we know it's a busy time of year, we'll also post some of those materials, some videos, and the survey online. That'll be available through the end of the month. So we hope to see you today at the Convention Center, um, but if not, go to chelanpud.org where you can find those materials and learn more about it. Brett, will the demand of electricity in our area, I'm specifically speaking about North Central Washington and the three PUDs, but you're just going to speak for the Chelan PUD, is the demand of electricity ever going to go down? I mean, there's a lot of electronics have gotten very, everything from LED lights to just general home appliances, they're a lot more energy efficient than they have ever been before, but on the other hand, more people are moving in and houses and developments are going in and businesses. Is the demand ever going to plateau or, and maybe go down a little bit, or is it always in your job? You always have to think there's always going to be more and more demand for more and more energy. Yeah, well, that's, that's a great question. And at least for the next 10 years, we see that there could be quite an increase um, from electrification of vehicles. But also, um, there's lots of potential for large loads to move in. So different server farms and other uh, companies that find this attractive place to live as well. Uh, and so that's what we're concerned about is, is those large loads. What do you want people to take away from You mentioned this briefly, Rachel, if they come to the convention center, and again, it's from two to six. It's just drop in. There's going to be booths and tables and, mm -hmm. and experts. What do you want the general public to take away from it, and what do you want to take from the general public mm. uh, on both of those? Give me the message on both sides of that. Okay, so we want the public to be able to weigh in on some of these technologies. What do they like about it? What do they don't like about it? Um, we want to hear that feedback. Um, as a, what was your second part of your question? What do, what do you want, what's the message that the PUDs want to bring to the public? Because, mm. uh, hey, you know, there are yeah. other options out there and we have to think about this. Because right. again, people are just, they just think, okay, we have the proverbial dams and that's, we're all high on the hog. And so pe we people, people, people aren't know. gonna think about that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm just, I'm just thinking, thinking Joe Blow here, but people are gonna say, we got cheap electricity and we love it. And <laughs> why do we have to worry about fission and fusion and gravity storage? Well, I think it's, it's so that we can keep those same benefits that we have. Mm -hmm. um, so that we can keep the surplus, so that we can sell that. Um, and we, I think we all want to be part of the solution for Washington State, right? So as other parts of the state can't use coal and, and natural gas, we want to be able to s supply them 
given that opportunity to, to have clean electricity um, at the best price that we can get it to them. You like your job? I do. I, I love mean, it. This is an important job. It is. You're, yeah. you're like the you're you're the guy who's plugging in the cards here. <laughs> yeah. I, we asked this question. I asked this question kind of jokingly off the air. I said, "Who pays the PUD's power bill?" And the PUD <laughs> pays their own power bill. Yep, I mean, that's, that's all right. part of the. I thought that was kind of mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Two o'clock to six o'clock today at the uh, Wenatchee Convention Center, you're going to be asked to take a short survey, really short, completely painless. And uh, light refreshments and prizes? That's right. Yeah. Uh, so if you turn in a survey, you get entered to win one of six prize baskets. Okay. When the PUD sponsors the Apple Sox game every year and you bring those little foam baseballs, <laughs> can you give me some of those? Because I got a bunch right. of those last time. We, we love to play with them around the office. We that's, do. You know, and that's, you got to come to the event, Dan. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. I will be there today at 2 <laughs> if that means Rachel gets me. A foam, uh, a foam, a uh, little foam baseball with a little PUD logo. Yeah, we actually yeah, play you. with those around. It. You got some? You still got? You know where they're stored? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do. And you know what? I actually, I love to use them. I've got some fruit trees at home. I like to use them as limb spreaders. Oh, great yeah. idea! So, yeah, it's uh, lots of little things you could do with those sort of with those little foam balls. It's good to see you again. Uh, <laughs> and the new office is looking good, Rachel. You're, you're at the. At oh the, yeah, at the new we're in the middle of a holiday decorating contest okay. at the PUD, and it's been a lot of fun. It, PUD is actually a very competitive place between the departments when it comes to uh, decorating for the holidays. It's been fun to watch. <laughs> it's nice meeting you. Keep up the good work. I'm glad that I have my job and not yours. I don't think I can handle that kind of that kind of. We pressure. should trade. We could trade one day. You want to trade one <laughs> yeah. day? You want to trade one day? It's good to see you, Brett. Uh, uh, break a leg if that's what you do at these kinds of things. Again, it's from <laughs> two to six at the at the uh, convention center, and uh, you're going to learn something. I guarantee you. You show up, you're, you're going to learn something. And uh, have fun, and let us know how it goes. Yeah, we will. And all the results will be on the on the w website when it's all said and done. Yeah, when we Good. when we have all the results, we'll let you know what everybody said. You'll send out a press release when mm -hmm. we got it. Thanks, yep. Rachel. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. You're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley. We'll be right back. Digital Media Arts Program, we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. Over there. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands on learning experience. Bienvenido al Centro de Resolución de Conflictos. Brindamos servicios a los condados de Grant y Adams, ayudando a empresas y personas a resolver problemas difíciles. Ofrecemos ayuda con conflictos de trabajo, problemas residenciales y asuntos familiares. Podemos capacitar a su personal en habilidades de prevención y resolución de conflictos. Llámenos al 509-237-3705 para obtener más información. Another day with the sun taking the day off, and it's going to be that way. Some late afternoon sun breaks are possible. Uh, fairly dry, some light snow in the mountains. We're going to be under the influence of another ridge of high pressure, and we've talked about this before. When high pressure builds up or moves into the area, and clouds and fog have already established themselves, there's no place for it to go. Going to be kind of misty and cloudy. And uh, are we going to have a white Christmas? I showed you these two slides at the start of the show? And the answer is no. Unfortunately, we have a 60 to 70 percent chance, uh, according to the Climate Prediction Center, of having above normal temperatures into the holiday week and about a 30 percent chance of below normal precipitation. It does not look like we're going to have a white Christmas. You go up into the mountains and up into Canada and a few other locations, uh, You'll have some snow. If that's important to you, if you want to have some snow for the Christmas holiday, you will have to go elsewhere here in the Wenatchee Valley 
and most of our viewing area, it isn't going to happen. From the National Weather Service. <coughs> uh, let's see, foggy, cloudy, misty, some light rain, maybe a sunbreak, and a high of 38 tonight. Patchy fog, uh, dense freezing fog and clouds, 31 for the overnight low. On Friday, clouds, freezing fog, regular fog, some light mist, high of 39. For Friday night, clouds, fog, some freezing fog, some mist, and an overnight low of 30. Saturday, clouds and fog and mist, and a high of 38. Saturday night, clouds and fog and mist, and an overnight low of 29. And then on Sunday, we wrap up the week with clouds and fog and mist, and a high of 38. And the hits just keep on coming. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. fascinating capital cities. That's me, Elizabeth, and today I'm in Germany with my friend Garrett Clayton. We'll tour the town. This is also known as King Frederick Street. Mm -hmm. Friedrich, known for King Frederick. And make some amazing discoveries. You checked out the artwork on this car? Then we'll uncover some of Berlin's infamous history. We are standing in front of one of the last remaining pieces of the Berlin Wall. And put our wall chipping skills to the test. This is a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. Before adventuring into the town of Potsdam. So we're here at King Frederick's grave, but why are there potatoes on it? It's a trip you don't want to miss, so it's a good thing you're coming with us. Woo! <laughs> Whoa, look at that store over there. Ooh, let's check it out. OK. Welcome to Elizabeth Stanton's Great Big World in Berlin. Hey, guys.